to us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The Messiah, oh, to see him, to lift him high and lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. To us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given, the Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 high and lifted up, shining in the Merry Christmas, everyone. So good to see you. It, you know, it's something about Christmas Eve services. You look out on the congregation, and everybody has smiles on, and their new sweaters, and everything else. It's so good to be together. And you have family and friends who are joining you. That's absolutely wonderful. So thank you so much for coming. Just a couple quick announcements before we begin our worship, and one has to do with the candles. If you haven't, didn't pick up a candle on the way in, just wave at an usher. They'll throw one right at you. And so um, be sure you have one for when we sing Silent Night. And then the kind of the thing about the candle lighting is, is that you always keep the lit candle upright, okay? And uh, so when you tip it like that, the wax would be all over. So just keep it upright, and the unlit candle will turn and light from that. And then we'll pass it up and down the rows and then sing Silent Night together. Also wanted to make note that inside your worship folder today is an offering envelope for Christmas. And so if you want to use that in a special way, uh, we'll just say thank you so much for your gift, and you'll get uh, noted for that for um, your offering. So thank you. For those of you who are joining us online, welcome to you as well. We just pray that this time of worship, whether you're at home or here, will be a blessing to you. And we're going to share the Lord's Supper a little bit later. And so we'll invite people to come forward to receive that. For those of you at home, we just invite you to have a piece of bread uh, and a wine uh, to share at that time. And just uh, know that we'll say the words and you'll say those with us, okay? Well, that's the announcements for this time. We're thankful for all of our music and for our uh, instrumentation today. And so let's begin our worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand and sing uh, 45, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Please join with me in the Christmas litany. The light of the world is about to be born. Our Savior, our Lord, our King. Look to Bethlehem, to a manger, to the lowliest of places, to a stable filled with animals and straw. Look to a shining star and angels singing, to shepherds and wise men their gifts bringing. Tonight will be the night. Our Advent is over. The time has come. Unto us a Savior is born. In him there is no darkness at all. We are children of the light. Come worship the Christ child this night. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join with me in prayer. We thank you, O God, for the songs of the first Christmas, which were sung by the angelic chorus, as their words removed fear from the shepherds and pronounced to them the good news that Christ was born. We ask, too, that our troubled hearts would find calm and contentment in the still of this Christmas night. In the name of Christ, child, amen. Would you wish each other a Merry Christmas? And if they could, I invite you to be seated if you would. As this is our tradition for our Christmas Eve family service, we, we have a story for you. And this is a new one this year, the Song of the Stars. And so we want to invite all the children who would like to come forward to do so at this time. Come join us down front. And it would be great if instead of like usually on the steps, you're going to want to sit down there so you can see the book. So it's maybe on the carpet, not on the steps, please. Good job. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. Well, this is one of my favorite parts. This is not one of my favorite parts, technology. I love to read stories, and I found this story, and I said, please, David, can I read this one to the kids on Christmas Eve? I think they'll really like it. It's called The Song of the Stars, and it's by Sally Lloyd-Jones, and it has lots of great pictures in it. Song of the Stars. The world was about to change forever, and it almost went by unnoticed. But the leaves that night rustled with a rumor, and news rang out across the open fields, and a song drifted over the hills. The wind whispered it softly in the sycamore trees and waved their moonlit branches to the sky, a barn owl took flight, and the woodland creatures stirred. It's time. It's time. What do you think it was time for? Wait and see. In the pine woods, two deer raised their heads, and a big brown bear sniffed the air, and a red fox darted. The faces of the little flowers lifted to the skies, and they said, It's time. It's time. The skies shouted it to the seas that thundered it to the waves that roared it to the great white whales that sang it to the starfish in the deep. And the tight sandpipers danced on the shining sands and said, It's time. It's time. Oh, good. The running rivers bounded over boulders and the otters clapped and played and sang to the ducklings that splashed and quacked to the salmon that leaped and leaped. And tiny field mice and insects and little creeping things and sparrows and robins and every single blade of grass squeaked, 
and hummed and chirped and sang, it's time, it's time, yes. Wild stallions drummed it to the ground. Get ready, get ready, be glad, be glad. On a lonely peak, a lion raised his strong head and roared it out to the empty wilderness. The mighty king, the prince of peace. Have you heard those before? The prince of peace, the mighty king. Who is that? Jesus. That's right. All the stars joined together in a chorus that rang out through the heavens. The bright and morning star. And on a hillside overlooking a little town, sheep nuzzled their new lambs. The good shepherd. Those are all special names for Jesus, aren't they? Suddenly, angels lit up the whole sky and a great choir sang it out loud. It's time. He's come at last. He's here. And in the little town, in a little shed, in a little window, a candle flickered in the dark. And a tiny cry rang out in the cold night air. And high above, a single star set in the highest heavens shone out brighter than all the others and poured down silver onto the little shed. A light to light up the whole world. The animals stood around his bed, and the whole earth and all the stars and the skies held its breath. The one who made us has come to live with us. And a young mother with no place to rest, nowhere to stay, nowhere to to rest and stay, kept it as a song inside her heart. Our rescuer. That's another name for Jesus. Some people call him our rescuer. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift. I know maybe under your trees you've got some gifts, or maybe you've already snuck a peek at a few. But her greatest gift is who? Jesus, right, God's greatest gift to us. Lying on a bed of straw and wrapped in rags, a tiny little baby. Heaven's son, sleeping under the stars that he made. That is God's greatest gift to us. That's what Christmas is all about. Baby Jesus coming down to visit with us. What I have for each of you tonight is something to help you remember that good gift that we have. So you know what this is, right? Candy cane. And if you put it this way, what does it remind us of? If you were in part of the Christmas program, you maybe remember. What was it? Shepherd's Kirk, right. What if I do it this way? This way? Yeah. So that's to remind you about the shepherds that came and And worshiped. And then inside the bag, I have some other things. I have three chocolates in there. Hmm, who came in three? The three wise men, right? So maybe this one's some gold and frankincense and myrrh, but really it's just chocolate. But inside the bag, it says on it, God's gift changed the world. And there's a little tag that says, God kept his promises to us all. Our Savior was born in a manger stall. He came as a baby, so sweet and small. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. You are the best gift of all. And inside each bag, there is a little baby Jesus. And, you know, you could put this beside your bed, your backpack, in your pocket, Some place where you'll see it all year long. Not just at Christmas, but to remember that God sent his greatest gift to us tonight and that he's here for us. All right? Can we fold our hands? Um, Let's repeat after me. 
Dear God, thank you so much for sending the greatest gift of all, your son Jesus. And all the people said, they said what? That's right. All right. Maybe Pastor David or Athletes, are you guys going to help? And if you've got someone who's sitting with you who maybe didn't come forward and you would like one. Isaiah 7, 10 through 14. Again, the Lord spoke to Ayaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. By this said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Here now, you, house of David, is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Uh, the second reading comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. No one has ever, ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in God, love lives in God and God in them. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Canarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town 
of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes, cloths, and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Luke chapter 2, 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This is will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those whom his favor rests. Luke chapter 2, 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Next. I get the finale. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. You guys did a great job reading. Thank you very much. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. On Christmas Eve... At least in my life, and I suspect in all of ours in some way or another, we are in a bit of a hurry. Now, if this doesn't apply to you, just set it aside a minute. But if it does, listen up. We are in a bit of a hurry. Last minute preparations. Who had to rush off and dash to the grocery store to pick something up? Anybody? (laughs) A few of you? Uh, Who maybe forgot a present to wrap? Anybody? I see some elbows poking here. Uh, who ironed a pair of pants that needed to be... Oh, thank you, Steph. That's, uh... You see, too often on a day like today, a Christmas holiday, a Christmas where we celebrate Jesus coming, there are so many things to do. You know, this is not um, any particular family. This is a, a made-up illustration, so if you think I'm just talking about you just i'm not okay so a family is headed to christmas eve worship they've got all these things that they tried to get done in their last minute and they're rushing to get ready to go to church someone is always standing by the door saying i'll be in the car and i'm leaving for church in five minutes with or without you rush 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 The kids pile into the back. Car doors are slammed. The engine revs. Away they go to church for Christmas Eve worship. Stressed, upset, and maybe a few unkind words being thought and hidden. They hustle into church as the opening song is being played. Mom looks down at their youngest child's feet and exclaims, Annie, you have your shoes on the wrong feet. Annie replies indignantly, but mom, they are the only feet I have. (laughs) Seemed like a long way to go for that, didn't it? (laughs) 
But isn't that just the way life is sometimes? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Rush, rush, rush. Busyness and stress that goes with us. And even though we know all of it's true, we, we think Christmas Eve at least should be different. We come to worship the Prince of Peace. To hear how it was to come on a midnight clear and how to be quiet because the baby Jesus is sleeping as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night as a lullaby. Yet the whole time we're trying to find that peace and that calmness in our life, our minds are racing. They're going, did I turn the oven off? Is Aunt Carol going to bring that salad? I hope FedEx leaves that last present on the porch when we get back home. And the whole point kind of drifts away of peace and calmness and hope. More than that, we live in a world that is filled with things that stress us out. One of which we can't escape, it would seem, is the whole business of COVID and the Delta and Omicron variant. We listen to the news and we hear about higher inflation costs and we see it at the grocery store and the gas pump. Supply chain problems, evidently, political turmoil, racial divide, climate change, TikTok school threats all come to us and we listen and we wonder, where is that peace? Where is that calmness? Where is that hope that life will get better? Maybe, maybe this Christmas we could have just a bit of God's grace. Well, consider this, if you would. God, the creator of the whole universe, is coming into the world as a human child. Isn't that remarkable? None of us can do such a thing. None of us can make something like that happen. But God has chosen to become like us as human beings and has come into the world as Jesus. I know you all uh, in Sunday school class learned this little lesson. I know you confirmation students, you aced this out on the test. But there's that one word, that one word that describes God with us. Does anyone remember what it is? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. You see, he comes to know us. And not just the good things about us, but he comes to know every part of our life. The pain that we carry, the hurt, the sorrow, the sins that we've committed. He comes to know us because in knowing us, he loves us. And in loving us, he's going to go to the cross to die for us. That our sins might be forgiven and that we might have life eternal in him. Here's your take home for this Christmas. It is that God came to us in Jesus. Think of it like that. Jesus, when he tells the story of the parable of the prodigal son, shares with us how it is that the father runs to meet the wayward son, who was dead but now is alive, who was lost but now is found. And they celebrate that. It is God that comes towards us, that God that comes to us. And like that same story, Jesus tells the story of the good shepherd the one who has lost one sheep, and he leaves the 99 to go out and to find the one. The Lord comes to us to find us when we are lost and alone and feeling abandoned. Well, tonight we realize that the miracle of Christmas is God's coming towards us, to us in Jesus. And we say, Emmanuel, God with us. I want you to carry this idea of God coming to us over into the imagery of a a Christmas table, if you would. How many of you are going to leave here now and go and have Christmas dinner on some spectacular table decorated and everything? Anybody? Two of you? Well, the rest of you are going to be very hungry. Uh, I think most of you have or will. Not only that, but I'm guessing that many of you spent most of the day getting that ready, putting the tablecloth down, putting the special Christmas dishes out. Uh, maybe you got those cute little salt and pepper shakers that look like snowmen or uh, persons. I guess we might have the only set. Candles will be lit. 
the glasses will be poured, the food will be on the table, and then the Christmas table will be ready. Just perfect. You see, it doesn't matter whether it's a rectangle table or a round table, a wooden table, a metal table, a modern table, an antique table, a huge table with many leaves expanding out, or maybe just the table for one or two. It's the Christmas table. And I'm willing to bet right now, if you close your eyes, oh, never say close your eyes during a sermon. But if you were to close your eyes, and if you were to imagine that table for you, maybe it's the one that's in your home right now. Or maybe it's the one of your youth, the one that you grew up with. That table is the place in which family gathers. It's the place where traditions are kept. And if you pray the prayer of table grace that many do, it is inviting Jesus to be at your Christmas table. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed, or some variation thereof. Jesus is with us, Emmanuel. Well, hey, as a, as a youngster growing up uh, in Albert Lee, Minnesota, my parents and my sisters, we would all load up in the car on Christmas Day and we'd head out to Grandpa and Grandma Hansen's house. It was a really neat house because it uh, was an old one-room schoolhouse that had been remodeled. And it was out in the country and so there was lots of room to play as kids and do stuff out in the snow. Come time to eat, the long dining room table was added with a number of leaves set and there were regular chairs and folding chairs and card tables all set up. And it was the Christmas table that I remember the most. All the glory of Christmas there. More than that, there was much laughter. There was much teasing going around. Uncle Gary always spilled a glass of water. The food and the family the most. Christmas table is filled with tradition. Well, I believe that Jesus is there at that table, even at the kids' table. Jesus is us as we celebrate, and God gives th- we give thanks to God for that most wonderful gift. Let me close with this. Someone told me a story about a Christmas table where all the family was gathered around and I don't know if this is true at your place or not, but mom was doing most of the serving. And it wasn't because she was being forced to, it was because she knew no one else would do it right. Everyone had been served, and mom pulls her chair up and sits down and unfolds her napkin, and she bows her head. And everyone thought that she was going to pray again, but instead they, they heard her cry. And out of concern, they said, Mom, are you okay? What's, what's wrong? And she looked up teary-eyed and said, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful because God has blessed us. We've survived a pandemic and we have seen our way through the worst of times with your father's passing. I'm thankful for each of you and for our family and the strength of our faith. For Jesus is coming to be with us, and I'm thankful. And everyone around the table bowed their head too. Tonight, Jesus invites you to come to the Christmas table. Amen. We're going to join in singing. Please stand. What?
Should we say thank you to our children for singing? Thank you. Let's join in the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, and creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll receive our Christmas offering, and we just want to thank you for the gifts that you give because they support and they take uh, they help with the ministry that we are all about. Thank you. And friends rejoice Please rise. 
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for it. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks for it, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we pray together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Those of you who are joining us at home uh, and you have communion prepared, take the bread and share it with someone who is with you or with yourself and say the body of Christ is given for you. And with same with the wine, say the blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of Christ is given for you. Let Christ shed for you. Love. 
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and great. God agreed and said, Amen. We're going to share in the distribution of the candles, and so you may be seated.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight that you are here amongst us. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that it encourages us in faith to let that, let that light shine out to others. So bless these people tonight, their families and their celebrations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary and the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels and the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. God bless you now and forever. Amen. You may extinguish the candle. Let's stand and sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more than sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as. Uh, go in peace and serve the Lord. We will. Thank you for coming.